In the modern video game world, there are two types of developers attempting to strike it rich with living, breathing games as a service. There are the teams that give up after a floundering launch, and these are juxtaposed by developers that know that they have something special and continue to grow and breathe life into their products for years to come. Ubisoft, for instance, has been fantastic at the latter in recent years. They've been progressively cultivating rabid fan bases for their titles like Rainbow Six, For Honor, The Division, Ghost Recon, and more. Back in April 2017, four years ago this week, acclaimed developers behind hit 90s games such as Battletoads, Donkey Kong Country, Killer Instinct, Banjo-Kazooie, Perfect Dark, and others released Sea of Thieves. Now, four years later, Sea of Thieves has put pulled pork in my mac and cheese. I'm Wyatt Fawcett, and this is the first bite. It was simple in concept, true in its vision, but Rare, at the time, were fully aware that they had something special on their hands. It felt like my mom's macaroni and cheese. There's nothing fancy about it. It's not an intricate meal. But goddamn does it not taste fundamentally amazing and satisfies every time you eat it. When Rare opened up their seas to pirates all over the world, it was magical, satisfying, and one hell of a refreshing taste for gamers inundated with its new atmospheric jungle, slow-paced gameplay, and a need to work together with others to gather spoils of treasure. Unfortunately, it was my mum's mac and cheese, and it didn't take too long for players to feel like they've outgrown the palette of content available to them in this launch version. There were a few major factors that contributed to the successful launch of Sea of Thieves back in 2017, the biggest of which is industry clout. Rare has earned the attention of consumers by crafting many experiences that help shape and mold today's gamers into passionate fans of this entertainment genre. Seeing the name Rare fade in at the beginning of a reveal trailer automatically forces fans to pay attention. Better yet, they were bringing a fresh take on group multiplayer and pirate themes to video games which caused quite a stir back in the day. And I say back in the day as in... A lot has gone on since 2017. And the ripples in the water that Sea of Thieves made when it came out can still be felt today. The second major factor was Rare's relationship with Microsoft and Xbox. When Sea of Thieves launched, it was one of the first premium experiences made by a AAA studio to be exclusive to the Xbox and its fantastic Game Pass value. This provided longtime Xbox fans with instant access to this new product, which, in and of itself, has gone a long way to revolutionize the genre that otherwise felt pretty stagnant. To this day, Sea of Thieves feels all but alone on its island, with core gameplay loops nearly unreplicated in other titles, as well as a phenomenal appeal for those looking to work together, hunt treasure, and discover interesting things within the world. Without a doubt, the success of Sea of Thieves at launch propped Rare up for the unique opportunity to grow the game in whichever direction they wished. Luckily for pirates around the globe, the team didn't rip apart the fundamentals. Simply, they added to the formula in a non-disruptive way, increasing the amount of content rather than changing any core piece of the puzzle. Though Xbox isn't fabulous at releasing or discussing numbers like sales or active players, it was clear that the buzz surrounding SOT at launch died down a bit the following year, and it gave diehard fans a window of opportunity to play in a less crowded arena. In the years since launch, Sea of Thieves has come out on Windows PC through Game Pass, the next generation of Xbox consoles, and most recently on Steam. The game saw its largest jump in active players the first few months of 2019, seeing a jump of nearly 9 million players in just one month. But it has recently come to a peak, 
at over 20 million active players in March of 2021. Now, how much of that peak comes from the boredom and gaming trends increasing throughout this pandemic or big name streamers picking up the game again is a little uncertain. Regardless of why the seas are steadily growing more popular, the team at Rare began wrapping up their first season's pass in previous weeks and kicked off season two of content. Searching for another reason to boot up a game, ring my friends on Discord, and have a howling good time together, we reinstalled recently and set sail once again. With one season of new gear under their belt and the perpetual iteration of their formula for raids and impromptu adventures, Sea of Thieves in the year 2021 still feels like a breath of fresh air, and it's mostly due to that same flavor the game had at launch four years ago. Through the waves of gaming greats, intense shooters, difficult to swallow seriousness in topics, and incredible indies, Sea of Thieves remains that fresh air, and it's like going on vacation. Except, the resort, built and operated by Rare, has added numerous new activities for escapees to sign up for once you arrive. The seasonal goods on offer come in a timed pass, alongside updated renowned goals. There's simply a lot of stuff to unlock. Whether you're stoked to set fire to others, pirate their halls, or you just want to spend hours catching all the different types of fish found in the waters, there's just plenty to do. Part of my adoration for the current installment of content is the flushing out of initial ideas. Merchant quests can give you lists of stuff to collect from one NPC and deliver to another, so you actually feel like a merchant or a delivery boy. You can follow trails of clues to find sunken merchant vessels, recover all the goods, and come back and sell it all to your merchant friends. There's even a buy low, sell high mechanic, which is simple and gives you just enough coins to be worth the trouble. And this is true across all the different fields. The souls, the sea dogs, everything just feels a little bit more deep. And that's not an ocean pun. Players are also given the choice to sail under a banner of a specific group now. So you fly your merchant flag. As you complete tasks and collect goods, your flag will rank up. The higher the level, the more bonus rewards you are granted by selling to your chosen group. When a player ship reaches the cap at level 5, you become visible to all those hunting PvE ships. Reapers, the collection of players under the Reaper flag, are always present on the map. You can see where they are. They gain coins and infamy by hunting down player ships, destroying them, and selling their leveled up alliance flags back to the Reapers. This new system gives the entire map a looming danger feel, turning the entire ocean into one big game of cat and mouse. There are also increasingly difficult environmental problems, like the volcanoes. The other day, me and my ship crew were sitting next to an island. They were off on land trying to capture the skull we were looking for while I was maintaining watch over our boat. That was until the volcano one island over started erupting and rained down lava and rocks upon the ocean surrounding it, including our ship. It's stuff like this that makes Sea of Thieves feel alive, and it's always refreshing. You just never know what's around the corner. Gaming has played such a crucial role in my mental health through the pandemic, helping bridge the vast distance gap between myself and my closest friends. Back in February, it became extremely apparent that I needed more time with them, thanks to the launch of Valheim. After obsessively spending hours together almost daily, we started searching for other experiences that could match that level of cooperation and coordinated friendship, which is where the reinstallation of Sea of Thieves came up in our discussion. Just a few weeks into our return to the seas, and the game is extremely emblematic of the desire to be intertwined with my gaming family. Thanks to the addition of different raids or forts, a gigantic addition of commendations and rep to earn in comparison to the initial launch, 
and the exact same awe we felt when the title released four years ago. Sea of Thieves has become the living room in which I get to nurture my relationship with those I care about. During a time in my life when connection and spontaneity thrive hand in hand, there are a few video games that provide both as well as Sea of Thieves does. Every time I play, I'm giddy. And that feeling of what's going to happen next that made the game such a refreshing experience years ago still remains, amplified by global limitations and extenuating circumstances, of course. So I guess I just have to say thank you, Rare, for being the wind in our sails as we come together as a family and nurture our relationships through wild fun. And oh my god, there's a ghost ship on our port side. Please raise the anchor. Thanks for sticking it out with us. I'm, I'm really excited to continue writing and producing First Bite. It would really help us out if you went to Google Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, or Apple Podcasts, and subscribe to the show. We really look at those numbers closely, and we're really excited to be ranking fairly high in our home country. There's not a lot of content out there that we want to pick apart as much as video games. And I think that there's something to be said for returning to games like the Sea of Thieves in 2021, trying to spend as much time with our friends and family and loved ones. And video games have always been that place for me and mine. So that's what we're celebrating with this podcast. A few of you have reached out to me on social media and asked about other shows. And we do have a few extra podcasts in the works. We're not quite ready to talk about them just yet, but we will have some more information for you shortly. Again, thank you so much for listening. My name is Wyatt Fawcett, and we'll see you next week.